Hello, today we're going to talk about transformations of quadratic functions. Specifically, we're going to talk about when a quadratic function is written in this format right here. And this is called vertex form. And it makes it really easy to tell how it changes from the shape of the parent graph. So the shape of the parent graph is the basic f of x equals x squared. And when graphed, it forms a u-shape called a parabola. That's any quadratic equation, forms a parabola. And let's just look at what happens in general. Okay, so here's the parent graph. And you can see that when you subtract h from x, notice that's in the parentheses and that whole thing is squared also, it actually moves it the opposite direction. It's, so if it says minus h, it actually slides over to the right. When it says plus h, then it slides over to the left. And then vertical translation it really affects the output, and that's why it's added. So here's the parent function, and you can see that if something's added to it, if it's positive, it's going to go upward. It just The whole thing just moves upward. If it's negative, then it moves downward. Okay, so we're just focusing on those two transformations first. So first of all, let's just graph the parent graph. So the parent graph is pretty easy to graph because right in the middle it starts at 0, 0. Because any, any, any x that you put in, you square it to get the y. So if you have an x of 1, then 1 squared is also 1. If you have an x of 2, then 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be up here. And we can just reflect it over. Remember they have an axis of symmetry in the middle, what you know about parabolas. And this, I, mean, I think we have room for 3. So 3 squared would be 9, so it goes all the way up here, 6, 7, 8, 9, to this top line, and reflect it over to the other side. So here's our basic parent function. Oops, didn't draw that very straight. Okay straighter this time. Well, you see where the points are. <laughs> That's where it should be going. Okay, and now let's look at what the transformation is. Okay, I'm going to highlight it in blue. So we notice that it says plus 4, which means, let's just go ahead and list it left 4, because it's the opposite of what it looks like. And then the minus 1 means the whole thing is going to shift down 1. So what we could do is actually look at each point and just go to left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1. Let's look at this point and go to the left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1. Look at this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1. I forgot this point way up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1. Do the same thing with the ones on the right. Or, actually, since it is, we can use our axis of symmetry and reflect it to the other side. Maybe I'll be a little faster. One, two, three. All right, so now we have our parabola. It's already transformed to its current shape. Okay, let's look at the next ones over here. So if you have a negative in front of your x squared, the whole thing is going to flip over the x-axis. And if you have a negative inside the squared part, then it's going to reflect across the y-axis. And a horizontal stretch and shrink, these ones can be a bit more confusing. So a horizontal stretch, it stretches away from the y-axis when a is between 0 and 1. And notice that the a is inside the squared part. And it's a horizontal shrink when a is greater than 1. And this is what we're going to be focusing on more in Algebra 2. So we have a vertical stretch and shrink. And this is the a in front of the x squared, and it's not included in the squared part. So whatever number is in front of the x squared, if it's greater than 1, it's actually going to look thinner right here. 
and if it's less than one but but bigger than zero then it's going to look fatter it's a vertical stretch and a vertical shrink okay so let's do an example of this it's a little bit more confusing i feel like the easiest transformations are when you slide it slide it around okay so the negative means it's going to flip over let's draw our parent graph again really quick just remember it was zero and then it was one one over two up four one two three four and this time i don't think we have room to do the tallest one so we're going to reflect it right here Okay, so we already know it's going to reflect over the x-axis. It's going to just flip upside down. But it also has a vertical shrink. And notice, though, it basically cuts whatever the x squared is in half. And so whatever you get for, well, find the x squared first, because the 1 half isn't included in the squared, and then cut it in half. So when we reflect it, we know it's going to go downward, right? But it's going to start at 0, 0 still. So instead of going having an output of 1, it's going to have an output of 1 half. And this one, instead of having an output of 4, it's only going to have an output of 2. Now there might be room to actually draw a little bit more. Just pretend if we had had a third one, it would have gone up to 9, which means it would have gone to just 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4.5, which would be about right here, and reflect it over to the other side. And so this gives us a better picture of what this should be. So you can see it looks wider, even though this number is small. That's, usually, that's because it's actually shrinking the graph vertically. Oh, I, I forgot to list our reflection. So we have reflection or our transformations. Reflection in the x-axis. It's going to kind of help you keep everything straight. And it's also a vertical shrink. Alright, that's it for today. I'll talk to you later.